welcome to a brand new episode of That Toy Life. It has been a minute since we've been on screen or together live streaming. Uh, I've been sick. Yeah, I've had the crud, the cough. <laughs> Still not quite over it, but I'll mute before I cough tonight. But with me as always, before we get into the show, here's Ray and... Oh, You're there back. Is Ray. He's back. He's back. We're uh, back. We're back. And uh Austin? Uh-huh. <laughs> I thought you had like you know gone to gray or black or something on the screen. You'd gone to found like, I thought you'd gone to found footage for a moment there, just like you're gonna be in a closet. Like, guys, it's a whole invasion happening. I was kind of hoping that actually would just like put both of, of us up on the screen and we both are just, we've abandoned our posts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought speaking of it. abandoning and abandoning posts, people have abandoned their, their making of quality movies. Oh, yes, that that's true. true. Or, or at least like, you know, I would say not quality, but oh, well, I'll say this because I haven't watched them all, but something's gone wrong because they have been as, accept- as successful as they have. That is true. That is true. I have seen tonight. We're obviously the good segue. We're going to talk about what went wrong with comic book movies in 2023. You know, that there's been lots of bad with just a few good over here, but are they all necessarily bad or is it just public perception keeping people away? I don't know. We're going to talk about it tonight. Uh, I think mo- we've seen most of the superhero movies. I've seen them all. Mm-hmm. Uh, Austin and Ray have probably seen most of them that we're going to talk about. So I think we can have a good conversation about these movies. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> obviously it's not been a good year for Marvel, especially. Well, well, Marvel and DC at the box office. Yeah. DC has been struggling already, but yeah. th- this year hasn't been helpful. And I'll say this to start it. Uh, I would say the easiest answer for what's going on with DC is, for anybody who knows what's going on, it's just there's lack of investment. There's yes. a lack of feel of investment or caring because everybody who knows what's going on is just waiting for them to basically burn out, burn through the current stuff that was that's been in the pipeline for years. And then now they're just waiting for James Gunn official, like his official new stuff to start up. I think I think you're correct. I think you're correct. Uh, Deadline just posted an article today mm-hmm. uh, talking about Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom uh, splashes on down on the tracking with yep. fifty to sixty million dollar opening over Christmas stretch, which is less than the Flash. Yep, which is it's not sad. good. That that movie's and it's so weird how that movie's had a really weird production. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> history, I guess, would be the word. Like so much, like just the you know the Amber Heard stuff that happened. Yeah, and apparently that ended up causing them to cut or redo a lot of her stuff to make it very minimal to the story. Yeah, and and I saw Jason Momoa on like Conan or somebody mm-hmm. earlier this week, and he was, you know, they were talking about Aquaman, obviously, mm-hmm. and. You know, there's no qualms about it. He's this is it. This is we're ending this DC universe. Yeah. You know, and he said it's not it necessarily for me, but for me as Aquaman, yes. He yeah. said there there'll always be a place at DC for me. Hint, hint, Lobo, hint, hint. I swear you if know, he's Lobo, I'm just gonna I'm he's Lobo. It's it's I think it's a given. I just uh, he'll be in Superman. I just don't want Lobo at all. I just I'm I, I <clears throat> Yeah, but he, I, he he's gonna be Lobo. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but and you you can look at the other stuff that's happened this year also and just see the writing on the wall that just people have no investment right now because of it. Like, yeah. Well. Well. There's certain there's small investment in certain things, right? Mm-hmm. Like they're the, like Guardians of the Galaxy three. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I well like I said. Uh, well, I'm more talking about DC, right? Oh, okay, okay. Because of, because of that whole deal, because you know, besides just Aquaman, which I, I'm I'm excited. I'm I'm gonna try to see it if I can, mm-hmm. because I, I love the concept of pairing Arthur and Orm up now after making oh, yeah, yeah. you know after they you know were at opposite ends. Now they're doing like a buddy movie, and mm-hmm. and I love the uh, I love the storylines of Orm's redemption in the comics. So. 
I like the idea of that. So I, I do want to see it, and I would like it to see it succeed, but I don't think it will. I don't think it's going to do yeah. very well. I don't think so either. And, in, you know, for the most part, there were three, I think, three DC movies this year, right? So you had Shazam, Fury of the Gods. You had Blue Beetle, The Flash, oh, Aquaman. So you're going to have four DC movies this year. Wait, so Blue Beetle, The Flash, Aquaman. What's the other one that I'm missing? Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Uh, I always forget that one because it's new. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and I will say Shazam, Fury of the Gods is not a bad movie. It's not? Okay. No, it's not a bad movie. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I kind of enjoyed it. Mm. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle was 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 good to me. You know, I think I think one thing that made me not have too much investment in, in wanting to see uh, the Fury of the God stuff was, I think, is because of how the first movie ended, because of what they had promised, and they couldn't, and they decided, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, you know, yeah. they they promised Mister. You know, they were teasing Mister. Mine. And oh, yeah, that's kind of like a thing I, I really don't dig unless there's some kind of well, there plan. is there's a continuation of that. Interesting, see, and, that, and that's a it, so it have, kind of, have y'all seen it? No, I haven't watched it yet. I need to, as I mean, it's on the back. So I, 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 I don't want to spoil anything then. I'm not I'm, gonna spoil anything. I mean, it's probably not gonna go anywhere because I, I'm not sure well, that well, none of it is. None of it yet. is, yeah. yeah. I mean, there were there were several. Uh, there was a couple of different end credit scenes mm -hmm. in that movie that you know, again, continued on some stuff from the previous movie, mm -hmm. and also tried to set up stuff in the uh, in what the at the time they were trying to establish before I think James Gunn's announcement. Yeah, you know, I, well, I it almost seems like Zachary Lev Levi. Oh God, how do you say Levi? Levi, yeah. Seems like he is kind of like. Crossing his fingers and hoping James Gunn will keep him around. Yeah. But at this point, I think they're all gone. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, unless they're going to be recast as some other character. Other like, character, yeah. like <clears throat> in, in, like, you know, Jason Momoa's case. Um, yeah. But like, even the other big tentpole of the movie uh, or of the year was, you know, The Flash. And that was just huh. a weird mess. Because it, yes. it's a weird mess because there was good stuff in it. There were they're really great moments mm -hmm. and i would say I, i've noticed this now like a lot of people point out it's like yeah it really falls apart in the final act uh, so mm -hmm. much stuff final you know in the final act and you know the finale itself so much just really falls apart yep and it just feels like you could tell like too many people were like poking their fingers into the stories like do this do this nope don't yeah. don't, don't do that there don't do that and you know to me it was semi-enjoyable Mm -hmm. But the, the thing that killed it was w one of the things that I was most looking forward to, and that was to see other characters from the DC multiverse. And the way that they were portrayed on screen was absolutely horrible to me. It was like this, oh, but he's in flash time. That's why he sees the world like, that's why we're seeing the world like this. It looks like horrible CGI garbage. It almost looks it, like they just didn't want to pay actors to come yeah. in. Yeah, <clears throat> and which I read that uh, I, I watched. Nick an, Cage was there. Yeah, I, was, I watched an interview with him the other day, and he said. But he apparently, there. what he filmed, like he what he saw on screens, like that, that didn't look like what I filmed. I just yeah, I was like, like he, what I filmed. I just apparently I was just on screen. I was on set, and I was just told to stare like I'm watching a universe collide into another. And then he's on screen fighting a spider. You know, and, and and it was just horrible CGI, man. I mean, it looked like. And that's a, and that's another thing I would point out, like two thousand three uh, CGI. Yeah, well, no, I, no, 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 no. I would even point out like that stuff I saw with Marvel was was kind of committing this sin of like it, yeah. the CGI just feels unpolished or just rushed. And, and I would say that was a problem. This that's been a problem. It's not so much on the CG department. It feels no. it's a problem with a higher up because there's been yeah. a lot of talk about how there's been you know, crunching and, and, you know, really stressful work environments on all these VFX companies that get yeah. hired out by Disney or Warner brothers to do, you know, CG for the, you know, visual effects for these movies. And they're on such time crunches that everybody, you know, you got people working through their, you know, days off, you know, working extra hours, trying to get this out by this deadline that the studio is demanding. Well, I, I will say, let me go back and clarify my, my flash CGI. Like that, that might've been the best looking CGI ever. 
but it's the it's the way they did it. Mm-hmm. It it looked cartoonish, like oh. you know. Well, hey, that was, I mean, it was supposed to be what how the Flash sees things in Flash time. Yeah, right. And I just didn't appreciate that. I wanted to see like if you're gonna put Christopher Reeve in there, I want to see a real human like Christopher Reeve, not some cartoonish looking Christopher Reeve. Uh, like, it's probably you the know, best you were ever going to get, though, because yeah. I can't dig Christopher Reeve. Out. But no, I'm no, I'm sure, I'm sure they have enough scans. Yeah, but uh, they, they could, they could feasibly come up with a, a decent looking Christopher Reeve. Yeah. But even like if you look at Nicolas Cage, I mean, he was still that glossy, CG painted look. Yeah. You know, not a, uh, you know, their CGI where obviously Luke Skywalker in the Mandalorian. Yeah. You know, especially when they did season two Luke mm-hmm. where he looked, I mean, the, you know, he had a smish of Luke Skywalker. I mean, Mark Hamill and the other guy. Yeah. So he looked like a real person. This didn't look like a real person. It looked, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it really. Just look like, like a action figure, mm-hmm. you know, just crazy looking. So uh, I, that's what I meant. I, I know there's issues with the Marvel CGI. I was talking about just the, the way the director decided to. Oh yeah. Yeah. Frame. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't trying yeah. to compare. I was just pointing out that that's, that feels like that's been an issue. That's really kind of been getting a little out of hand mm-hmm. with it. And I get it for the flash because there is a lot about the flash and its mythos. It's going to lend itself to needing a lot of visual effects. Yeah. Yeah. But, nice. but like uh, I, I, I talked with Austin with about this a few weeks ago, you know, cause I finally watched black Panther work on it forever. He watched it too. And, like one of the worst parts of it for me was, you know, especially toward the end, there's that just overly ridiculous amount of CG that was used and you could, and it made it almost like ridiculous how obvious it was. And, and it made it like, I'll tell you, but the worst sin for, uh-huh. or the worst <laughs> part for me was uh, Iron Heart's suit. Yeah, the okay. the final yeah. suit. Now I did like the practical suit from the beginning when she first appeared, and that was that yeah. had a really cool practical look to it because it was practical. That her final suit, you could just look at it and see there there was never anything that existed that was physical about that suit. That was probably just yeah. her in in gray pajamas on a set. <laughs> yes, and, and, black and, black pajamas with the little white balls yeah. everywhere, so they can get her. Yeah. moving. I mean, I even missed that from the Iron Man movies, like toward the end because I, I at least missed you know I, I i appreciated at least when they would have robert Downey jr wearing some pieces of armor yeah. and then other pieces would be cg so you really he couldn't tell it was blended it. probably not. he didn't appreciate it that's why i got cgi'd really quick yeah. yeah but yeah yeah that was yeah that that's just a weird problem I, and i don't know how blue beetle or uh you know i don't know how that handles i know you know i, I do know that a lot of it did look practical from what I saw of Seth. Yeah, I've, I've seen some some shots, and he has a suit, like a real suit that he's yeah. in. <clears throat> so, I mean, you've seen Blue Beetle? No, not yet. It's it's like 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 uh, Shazam. It's okay. on Max. I just need to actually sit and watch it. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, again, Blue Beetle was good to me, mm-hmm. but knowing going in, knowing that this is not going to lead anywhere other than this guy is coming back to play Blue Beetle, but in a different universe. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, th- there's lots of cool family dynamic in that, in that movie. Uh, well, are there, are there any, tie- stuff? well, okay. Well, here's, here's a question then. Are there any ties that are mentioned or sh- shown in the movie that make it, uh, make it where a sequel would have conflicting things appear? Yeah. Uh, or did it keep itself just disconnected enough where like because I know Batman's mentioned. Yeah, but- Batman's mentioned in there, but the end I mean, there is an end credit sequence that goes that you know opens up a door mm-hmm. that could lead somewhere else for another character in in the Blue Beetle universe. Yeah. Right. So I mean it's not necessarily that. It couldn't I'm, fit in there, but I mm-hmm. I think timing was off on this one. Yeah, because I, I do like, think I, I do think I've heard James Gunn say like uh, maybe he's looked at it and said, "Well, it doesn't conflict with anything I've done," so he could just say like, "Yeah, it's it's part of my coming universe." Yeah, because and maybe he will enough. after Superman Legacy after yeah. he establishes his, you know, this is the first. 
because I yeah. think that's what he wants. That, that's the only. That's why I'm saying bad timing on Blue Beetle because it came out at the wrong time when yeah. James Gunn wants to firmly establish his DC universe with Superman Legacy being mm-hmm. first, and nothing yeah. exists before that. Uh, but knowing that this guy is perfect for the role of Jaime Reyes, yeah. So he's like, okay, we're gonna pull you in, just not that movie doesn't exist. You know, we'll, we'll George Lopez, you're just gonna have to go back home. George Lopez, you, you can't you can't come back. Uh, but he was really good in the movie. I, I mean, I he was George really good. So I don't, I, I, I don't <clears> mind him going back. He was really good. He was. Uh, I, yeah, yeah I, I had a couple issues with the movie, but just with the villain kind of okay. thing. Yeah, yeah other than that, it was, it was really I mean, good. when you when you make Susan Sarandon your villain, you're asking for problems. Yeah, yeah. No. Nah. <laughs> I mean, really, that, that that was my main issue with the thing. It wasn't like a there was a big bad other than her, but not her I mean, her being in a comic book movie just made like when I heard that she was gonna be in the movie, I immediately thought this is a paycheck. That's it for her. Like she's just gonna come yeah. on like did she come across like she like like she was just phoning in? Uh, or did she actually no. seem like she was trying? She she had some moments where okay. where she was trying. It, it just wasn't it wasn't that great. Hmm. So so I, I guess we've talked about the DC stuff, and hmm. just just for the record, you know we're going to track these. So out of the 2023 worldwide box office, hmm. just with the DC movies, um, let's see wh- where where the DC movies fit in. It looks like the Flash was number one. It fit well, not number one on this 2023 list. It actually finished 17th out of mm-hmm. all the movies in 2023 with 270 million dollars. Then, uh, the next movie is Shazam Fury of the Gods at 33 with 133 million dollars. Then, 34 right after Blue Beetle with 129 million dollars. And then, Aquaman, who knows? You know, I don't think that. When the first movie came out, they expected much of it or expected it to be as a billion dollar movie like it was. So who knows? Mm-hmm. You know, tracking on this is down, but when it comes out, word of mouth could spread and it could be a another billion dollar movie. But I kind of got my doubts because pe- the general audience does kind of know that DC is kind of closing up shop with this with this group of actors. It seems so, like it. Yeah, it seems like, yeah. you know. Yeah, so it, it, it I doubt it goes anywhere. Now, as far as Marvel goes, have you seen all the Marvel movies for this year? Wait, let, let's list the Marvel movies that have actually come out this year because I, I I don't think I've seen all of them. I think okay. I'm probably missing one or two. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. Seen that. Seen that. S- Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. Well, uh, technically not MCU. Not te- yeah, technically not MCU, but, it's but I haven't. Movie. Yeah, I haven't seen that one yet. Woo. Yeah, I haven't seen either of those. But, or the Spider Man movies. The- Huh? No, I've seen Guardians. I saw the first Guardians, but I haven't huh. seen either of the Spider-Man yeah. cartoons. Oh, oh. In, into yeah, definitely try those out. Into yes, incredible, it's very good. Yeah, very good. Visually, I'm just stunning. Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. Watch that. I just yeah. watched that. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then the Marvels. Not yet. I've seen that. I do intend to watch it. I do. And I believe those are the only Marvel movies. Correct. I think that's. I don't think there's anything else this year. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> And next year, Ooh. we'll talk about next year in a minute, in a little bit. But okay, so for the most part, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three was a hit. Yeah, right. And I and I and I think I, I yeah I mentioned this before, like before we started the episode, it was like that one. That one's one was like like across the Spider Verse. It felt like an exception to the rule of what was happening this year because there were a lot of mitigating factors as to why Guardians did so. Like why Guardians did really well compared with the other movies yes you know one being james gunn he had he had a very established brand at this point and and for, you know i i didn't think about this but his movie his third movie because of all the behind the scenes drama that happened his took the long like his took extremely long to get made yes. you know compared to other movie, other marvel movies that like churned out to get to their third movie, you know, between like, you know, I think there's only what, two, three years between like winter soldier, civil war. Mm-hmm. This one, you know, I think when was the last one? 2017. So, yeah. Yeah. It was before infinity war. Yeah. So yeah. 2017, yeah, 2016. Yeah. Something like that. Yep. And so, and by, so by the time it came out this year, it was just short of a decade 
since the first Guardians movie, which was 2014. Yep. Just short. So, just short. Just short a year. That's yep. crazy. You know, it took nine, you know, it took about nine years compared with the other Marvel movies. It's crazy that it took nine years for this storyline to be able to get itself wrapped up just because of all that behind the scenes drama that happened. But it was a good movie. It was a fantastic movie. Yeah. yeah. It but, was a good movie. But I think that's why the exception to the rule because it had already been, uh, like James Gunn already, you know, it had a big established brand, you know, a lot of goodwill from the first two movies and, and their inclusion in the Infinity War Endgame uh, parts of the Avengers. And uh, I think just people were invested in seeing how this played out because of all these characters that everybody loved and, you know, wanted to see how, how it finished off. How it ended, yeah. yeah. But it, it didn't do, I mean, it did really good for yeah. for 2023 mm-hmm. but it didn't do as good as the last guardians movie as we as we yeah. looked up earlier it, so it guardians was, and galaxy volume 2 made more money yeah not 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 like it, you know when you were talking about these tentpole blockbusters it, it's not terribly much more but i think yeah. it was i i think let me let me pull it up real quick because i have them but you're talking about 2017 ticket prices compared to 2023 ticket prices yeah yeah but uh but uh, what i was saying was yeah so guardians of the galaxy volume three it's box office as of now it was like 845 million in change yep and guardians of the galaxy volume two it's box office was 869 million just yeah. short of 870 million but yeah so it made a, a little bit more uh the second one did which is weird. Which is just it's crazy to me. That- but I, but I'd say like even though it was the exception to the rule, it, it is probably also kind of speaking to kind of the pattern also a little bit that we've been seeing. So even though it was very successful, it it did have this weird reverse effect that hadn't been really happening with the Marvel movies, you know, for a long time because there was a lo- there was a big streak once once you know the fire really got set under that whole franchise under this whole marvel ip yeah every successful you know every successive entry in in any series was making more than the last there's no diminishing returns yep and now which at some point it's got it always happens yeah it always plateaus but yeah but the thing is disney and you know it feels like disney and marvel they were riding that high thinking it wasn't ever gonna you know it was just going to keep climbing and now there's a plateau and it seems like they're scrambling to see how they're going to raise the plateau to keep it, you know, to keep it from falling irrelevant. And, and I will say that I think they're going to fix that next year, but we'll talk about that. Yeah. After we get through with this. Um, <clears throat> so the next movie, we're going to skip over spider spider verse. We're do the MCU stuff. Uh, so guardians of the galaxy finished number four out mm-hmm. of the, 2023 worldwide box office out of all movies guarding guardians of the galaxy was number four so coming in at number 10 was ant-man and the wasp quantum mania so not bad Mm. even though the movie to me was not as good as the first two movies uh and i don't know that i don't know the budget i wish we had the budgets right here to look at Mm. uh because Ant Man and, Qua- and, and the Wasp Quantum Mania made four hundred and seventy six million dollars the worldwide box office. Yeah, and it had to be all CG. It had to be all green screen. Yes, like the that's, whole I movie. Think that's what killed it. I mean, to me, it just looked like a slightly uh, better than Episode Two. <laughs> yeah, Wars yeah. Like the clones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. All, yeah. All that was practical was probably a few patches of like uh, of land on the set where it's like, oh look, there's some like goopy looking stuff over there yeah so. and i and i really think ant-man defeating kang sort of diminishes kang's you know uh I w- power that, that that everybody see you know they don't see people don't see him as a thanos level threat i didn't i i when i was watching it i was under the impression that he was supposed to be a thanos level threat but i'm like wow we're already getting into a like a big skirmish with this guy and yeah they overpower him and i'm like i'm like huh he was sort of just like a a a thanos lackey really when i was really looking at you i'm saying like somebody not quite as powerful but a but definitely a threat so yeah that was kind of confusing i think yeah and i think my biggest problem with the movie was for a third 
film in a series that's been for the most part very contained in itself. The first mm-hmm. two movies were, you know, just about Scott and his world, you know, around yep. him. It felt like it was just no, we're gonna use this to build out for our next Avengers villain. That's yeah, it's yeah. like somebody it felt like in a his side, world calls it, this to happen. It did, yeah, it didn't it. feel it didn't feel like a movie that was for Scott and the cameos of Evangeline, of Evangeline Lilia as Hope Van Dyne because that's all she amounted to in the movie was a prop basically that appeared every few every now and then to react, which and, was that was really a disservice to her. I was so yeah. annoyed with that because she was fantastic in Ant Man and Ant Man and the Wasp. I loved her in both of those. And then this one, yeah. she was just, oh, mom, you dated men while you were down here. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna turn it. I'm gonna go fight some people. That's it. That's the that was the that was the extent of her character in the film. And and I think we were done a disservice by not having some of the other supporting characters like Ti and the uh, dude who's in every superhero movie. Uh. uh David Dasmakian. Yep, that guy. I can't say his name. <laughs> and then uh, oh, man. and the other guy, the really funny one. Oh, Michael Pena? Yeah, Michael Pena. Yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. they're yeah, eight man characters now. Why you, you, weren't they in the film? You'd think for a, a third, you know, because usually a, a, a lot of these Marvel franchises, they mm-hmm. try to do like, or you would think that they were they're trying to do the, the kind of trilogy formula, like have some yeah. kind of arc that ends in the third film, like some kind of character arc that ends like even Iron Man three, even though it was the end of, even though that wasn't the end of Tony Stark's story in the Marvel universe, that was a good end arc of his character. You know, if you look at it, because it, oh yeah, it had a good ending arc for him. Like you know, he he got over you know his reliance on his technology. You know, you know he had the 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 stuff removed from his chest. Yep, it it felt like an end point for his character, even though it wasn't the end yet. Um, this didn't feel like that. This felt more like a side quest. It's like, well, we're going to throw Scott over here and he's just going to do some stuff and introduce <laughs> the next villain. That's it. There wasn't really, there wasn't really an arc it felt like for, for any of the big characters. It just felt like it was, I'm having trouble with my daughter, even though I never had trouble with <clears throat> her before. And, and I think this is where, so you kick off the year, this being the first Marvel movie. Hmm. And it being that ba- kind of, I'm not saying luster. bad, but black luster. luster. Yeah, you you kind of set the 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 precedence for this is what's coming from Marvel yeah. in 2023, and people just weren't jazzed. Even after Guardians of the Galaxy three, which obviously people came yeah. came out to see, there's still something there, and I think a lot of it might have to do with some of the MCU shows as well that just weren't well received mm-hmm. um, throughout the year. To me, the only tie in with to not you know before we get off of Ant Man, the only thing mm-hmm. that tied it into the first movie was the villain. Like besides Kang, you had Modok, and yeah, yeah. It was basically oh, yeah, the tie yeah. into the first movie. But other than that, it was it was like I did. To be honest with you, I really heck, wasn't even that impressed with Kang. Heck, you could have just had yeah. you, he could have just been the villain by itself. It, it would have had a better, more sensical arc if yep. the villain had just been Modok. Yeah, just Modok. And you maybe just, maybe Jonathan Majors play a char- play that a version of that character that is a weakling throughout the movie, or somebody and who then reveals just, himself. Yeah, Mo- so, so he yeah. so he's like see, kind of like a lackey. He was like, "What? Well, I thought Majors was going to be a big bad guy." And all of a sudden, he turns the tables, and you know, he almost kills Modok off. You know, and then Modok does his little redemption thing to stop him. But I, it's, yeah. I didn't get paid to write it, so I'm not going to worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, so that ain't my. Uh, I ain't get paid to do this, so I ain't going to worry about writing their stuff for them. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so Ant Man finished number ten. Then we have to come all the way down to number twenty six, which is the Marvels, nice. which is still in theaters, right? Yeah. So it could go higher, mm-hmm. but right now it's at twenty six with only one hundred and eighty eight million dollars worldwide. Ouch. Worldwide. I didn't see it. Yeah, I, I did see it twice actually. I I, I, I I want to watch it. How it's was not it? great, uh, but the only reason I went to see it twice was I went to see it one week. Then the fam, my family's going to see that new Hunger Games movie, whatever. Oh yeah, the Ballad of so I was like, uh, oh god, the Ballad of Songbirds, Songbirds or something. Yeah, I've heard. So of, I just I've like heard this good too. 
I don't want to see that. I won't let me just go watch Marvel, the Marvels again. Right? Well, I have heard I missed something. I have heard this though. Uh, uh, I've heard one big thing kind of across the board in terms of praise for the movie, which was Iman Balani was fantastic. Yeah, she stole the show out of all yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah. That's, I you know, I said that coming up to the movie is like I feel like she's gonna be the one that carries the movie, you know. Yeah. And 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 to be fair, I think that this is the time when or this is the movie where Brie Larson actually settles in. She's like more comfortable as Captain Marvel and it shows. Do they flesh her out a little bit more? Uh, yeah. As a character. Yeah. Cause I, I felt like that was one thing that was lacking with the first Captain Marvel. I was like, I really didn't get a feel for her as a, as a person yet. She was just more of like, she was a person that did things, but I didn't really get a feel for. Yeah. Her. So they, so they give you a little more okay. insight into her, uh, you know, in this movie. Um, and, and I think that was cool. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I really don't know why. Well, the villain was kind of nah, worse than probably the worst MCU villain to date. And and there that's didn't really, huh? That's a tall order. Yeah. They, they've did, had some stinker villains. Yeah. No, this was, she was, this, this one was a stinker. The top Malekith. Uh, yeah. I mean, at least Malekith was played by Chris Eccleston. I mean, that, that does have, you know, he had, the only he got some pedigree behind that. I, yeah. I think he <laughs> he looked cooler, so that had uh, you know that he has that going for him, right? Uh, she was just she just didn't feel like a big bad in, in got, any way. That actress, oh god, I'm just remembering she has a connection, I think, to somebody. She's Tom Hiddleston's wife. Hot, yeah, Tom Hiddleston's wife. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I thought I'd just seen something about that recently. Yeah, you know, shock. Yeah, yeah. She okay. just, you know, and it could. I'm not blaming this on her. No, right. It's just the the character was not very good. It was not very good at all. Um, but I think the biggest excitement, and I'm not going to spoil it for you, is, is with the end scene credit. Okay. And what that means going I've, forward. I've heard about it, so I'm, yeah. I'm not going to worry about it. But, uh, yeah. you know, I, I almost want to... Because I, I, I hate that this is probably a good portion of the reason. Because it speaks to general audiences. Yeah, and and I'm not trying to belittle general audiences, but there is there's a baseline mm-hmm. of like, you know, I, don't, I don't know, maybe a, maybe it's attention span, or maybe it's just I don't know. It, uh, it, um, oh god, uh, oh god, apathy. Uh, uh, but I, I just I felt like there was this feel of this movie, just of like vile viciousness like in terms of like stuff i would see on the internet yeah 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 yeah. just because there's already this weird like like misogynistic hatred for brie larson yeah which is really bizarre yeah Mm -hmm. i I don't know just stuff like that that makes me feel like it made me not too surprised when the movie wasn't doing as well I yeah, I, I, and I don't know. I I don't know the fix for that because you're talking about fixing. You know, well, I, I, okay. Watching the movie, there mm-hmm. are some agendas that are tried to push, be, yeah. being pushed across, mm-hmm. uh, being pushed across, and and the, there is a large section of the general audience I, I, that I think a lot i'll say it was a large section of the audience that would see this movie in the first place which you know people who like comics you know yeah typical yeah. comic yeah. readers and a lot of those are gonna be kind of you know uh yeah i've known i've known plenty of them kind of you know that that kind of misogynist male type you know yeah. w- women are, are women characters are placeholders you know they're there to look pretty yeah, and hot I, I wouldn't even go so far as that because a comic book nerd regardless is going to mm-hmm. go see this movie even if they're on the internet typing yeah i'm not yeah. gonna go see it. they went to see the movie i guarantee i you. i'll say i think i didn't see it well but but well, that's just because i really haven't been to the theater as much this year at all yeah that, and yeah. i'll say that's another part of the problem too is that there just hasn't been i i feel like this is another like post-covid thing is just people don't go to the theaters that much as much they, as they, they don't to. and and you know ticket prices and tick prices are, are, are they, ridiculous. Yeah, they've gotten. Uh, I love my cheapskate Tuesdays. Yeah, ticket I prices just don't get to do them as much. <laughs> yep. Um, but unfortunately, Miss the Marvels yeah. didn't do as well as um, 
it should have. And yeah. and you know, and Nick, you know, Nick Fury's in there, but Nick Fury is to me, he's not Nick Fury that I've seen throughout the Marvel in, uh, for throughout he's, the MCU. He, this he's is Nick a, Fury after Secret Invasion. Yes. Yeah, which is <laughs> And and you do not have to watch Secret Invasion to know anything about the show. I you know, and I said this, you know, back after the show finished, I did say like it stuck the landing. And I'm not gonna say it as a whole, the show stuck the landing, but the reason I had said to y'all, like I texted afterwards, I felt like it stuck the landing was I liked the ending implication that the show had, which was it sounded like there was gonna be and I in things I don't know if this is gonna be followed up on at all in mm-hmm. MCU stuff, but the stuff the president did after the ending, you know, where he basically put like a, a live bounty out on anybody who's seen as like an alien or something like that. It's like, you're, you know, your time is up. You know, if we catch you being an alien, you're dead. Yeah. So I was like, I, I thought about Possibly. that. I was like, that, that leaves some like interesting, that leaves some interesting, you know, but that's not even the future, but that's I, not I, even I, mentioned. Yeah. But, and that's another thing of like Marvel stuff is that you never know if something's just going to get abandoned or not. You yeah, know, a little, a little, you know, development is like, oh yeah, that sounds fun. I can't wait to see that followed up, and it's just never mentioned again. Okay, so that that's that with the MCU, mm. but there's still two more comic book movies that mm-hmm. that uh, were shown at the big screen in 2023, okay. and they were animated shows. First up was, of course, the number six movie of 2023 which is spider-man across the spider-verse and it was really good i mean it was really good it made 690 million dollars and, uh, and this is a this is a part one right because this is like a two-part movie yes okay yes this is a part two and i you know i, I really like it because have, have y'all finished spider-man 2 no i don't oh the game yeah. no no i Baldur's Gate 3 soaked up my life for like okay. two months. I finally just finished it. There is an Easter egg, a Spider Verse Easter egg in there. Uh-huh. So I, I'll leave it at okay. that and let you guys find it. Well, I mean, I saw in the trailers, I, I think I saw like uh, Peter and Miles from uh, their their costumes. I think I saw them like. Well, I'm not trailers. talking about costumes. Yeah, because you know oh. they don't have the costumes. I'm talking about actual. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. That's, That's part cool. of the Spider Verse. Oh, yeah. All right. So. So uh yeah. Cool. I'll, I'll let you guys find that when you when you play through. But but yeah, man, that those two movies, the first and the second, are absolutely awesome. I love those movies to death. Um music's awesome, the the visual is is awesome, the story is awesome. It doesn't get much better than those two movies. Okay. And I can't wait for the third to wrap this thing up, you know. Nice. And Austin, you're doing yourself a big disservice by not watching those movies. <laughs> Which movies are we talking about? <laughs> Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, I was going to say, I started the first one a long time, like back after it had just come out. Yeah. And it was great what I watched. I just haven't gotten back to watching it yet. I need to. I was wanting to binge both of them. Yeah. Dedicate some time and say, I'm just going to watch these movies. They're really good. Really, really good. I definitely need to check it out. This year has been kind of a, like I've been, I've been playing catch up a lot on the Marvel series. So I've, yeah. me and my wife have gone through everything. I think we're pretty much caught up except for, I haven't seen. Um, Are you caught up on Loki? No, the, it's those two Ooh. series, this season of Loki. And um, what was the, what was the secret invasion? Thank you. The secret invasion is those two, those two series that we haven't watched yet. He's in for I think I'm going to end up watching. I think my wife is, huh? I said he's in for a treat with Secret yeah. Invasion, ain't he, Ashley? Yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't wait to check it out. I think I'm just going to watch those by myself. I think my wife yeah. is burned out on Marvel, and I wouldn't blame her. I'm, I'm like by the end of it, I'm like, yeah, it started to peter out after a while. It just started to get like once the once the wars was over, it was just sort of. Put, 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 put. Oh, just wait, they're gearing up. We'll talk yeah, about. Yeah, no, I'm just... I'm ready for mutants. I, I'm ready for some X Men, and I already heard the rumor about about. I'm not going to say anything else, but I already heard some rumors about uh marvels or whatever so i'm yeah so but this year let's see i i did watch most of those i don't think there was one i didn't I'm, other than spider-man my thing is, is this year too a barbie was number one could you believe mm-hmm. that barbie was number yep. one in the world <clears throat> yep. that was insane i actually saw that it was pretty decent like i said it was 
gave me the vibes that I thought it would. Probably wouldn't be a movie I would go back to that often. I'm sure I'll see it again at some point. Yeah. But yeah, The Flash definitely was one of my big disappointments. Mm-hmm. I was really hoping for more with that, with The Flash and Indiana Jones. I remember Indiana Jones oh, and Dial of Destiny yeah. was a was a big tentpole one that I was I was looking forward to, but at the same time I, I didn't think it needed to be done. Yep. And then it proved me it proved me right. Like it was like, yeah, Austin, you, <laughs> you didn't need to see this one. Yeah. <laughs> and um so yeah, I mean Dungeons and Dragons was fun. I think that was probably one of the better that's movies my, of this year. That's my top movie of the year. Like, I was gonna was, say in yeah, terms no, of like big movies that were in the theaters, that's that's my top of the I thought of the year. Transformers was great. Uh I thought Dungeons and Dragons was great. I thought um well, I hadn't can't... seen Fast X. I don't think I saw that one yet. <laughs> Just go watch I'm just saying, not. Super Mario Brothers was obviously a great movie. Yeah. Um, I just, oh, Meg 2. Me and my wife saw that recently because we had never watched no. it. Whoa, what a bananas movie. Like, really? it was it, in, Wasn't it fun, though? It was wasn't fun. It, it was fun, but I don't know if I'd ever watch it again. It was just, <laughs> it was insane. And my boy was in it, too, and he never even, I don't, I'm trying to think, did he ever throw a punch? Like, they, had, they used Jackie Wu Jing in it. It's like the first time I'd seen him in a true American production before mm-hmm. using like English. It was the, you know, the Asian sign. Wasn't he a scientist too, Ray? He was, uh, he was the guy. It was basically like he was sort of Jason Statham's, uh, Oh, Oh, oh the, 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 the girl's uncle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, okay. Yeah. Cause he, he was, I was trying to think he, he was the one that could control the, the shark. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. He's the uncle. I yeah. was going to say, he's actually a, a big time martial artist. Like he's a, he's, he's, been in a lot of martial arts like kung fu movies had mm-hmm. memorable fight scenes probably one of the best fight scenes ever with donnie yen and i'm like wow he's in this movie he's a nerd really doing a nerd doing something completely different so he was actually pretty good in the movie as someone uh, who didn't know any, i did not know that is about his past i would have never believed that he was a martial artist oh yeah yeah no just, he just is, watching that movie and just like he, he he pulled a nerd off pretty well him in in the kill kill uh <clears throat> oh wow why am i Brain Are you calling Kill Jason Statham Kill Man? Jo- no, it was Kill Zone. Kill. What's that? The Donnie Yen movie from from Hong Kong. Um. Anyway, it was like yeah, one man. of those movies. They they had a really good fight scene in it. Um. But yeah, that that was a that was a bonkers movie. But I there was oh Little Mermaid. That was I think a big tentpole movie this year that we watched. I thought it was one of the better live action remakes of the Disney movies, but it still was pretty much all the same. I mean, you, um, didn't you t- love Aquafina? Ninja Turtles. Didn't you love Aquafina? That was the second movie. Song? Yeah. Oof. Oof. What? That's got all butt. That's got all butt. No. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That the, the new Mutant Mayhem movie was really, really good. I thought that was, yes, that was I, up there. Oppenheimer. Yes, Oppenheimer was up there. I would have, I would have put that in the top five. The newest Mission Impossible. I was actually disappointed in. I was, really? I was, hmm. I thought it was going to be better than I thought. I like it wasn't as good as Fallout to me. Fallout was way better. Than which this is, one. which is crazy to think about because that's been one of those rare franchises where it seems like, especially once they got to the third movie and kind of hit that tone yeah. of what they wanted to be from there going forward they seem to get better and better and so that's crazy to think that it's actually falling short now it feels like it felt it felt tired i'll be honest with you watching the newest one felt tired i like the ties to the original movie mm-hmm. and i like like you know there it's it feels like a movie that, that is starting mm-hmm. to wrap make up. a make a wrap up and tie yeah. and tie its way towards a, a grand finale because yeah, i, I, I just see what's tired his, i didn't know. like the i didn't like the bad guys as much i didn't like the 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 well i saw what's his name was gonna be in it from the first movie um henry zerny uh, yeah kitridge kitridge is the character's name yeah uh, you see yeah. And, and you'll see stuff like that like yeah. where it's that and then the final action sequence on the train is sort of a throwback and reminiscent of the very first movie but it's yeah I don't know I just felt like in terms of like you said when they hit the third movie it just felt like one after another they they always were able to just one up each other mm-hmm. and make it better and better and better and this is the first one where it felt like maybe we've we're running out of gas 
Mm. And I will say, too, I, I felt concerned because if you remember all year this year, Tom Cruise has been showing himself ramping off that that mountain <laughs> over and over and over. And that's like the bet. That's not the only sequence in the whole movie. <laughs> he pretty much gave it to us all year. I'm going to mm. do it. You know, I'm going to do it. This and then what we're doing this movie. Did you well, remember that we're going to jump this in this movie? <laughs> there's another big thing I think I remember seeing that they had filmed. There was like a big practical uh, set piece. Um, the the train going off the bridge or something like that. Mm-hmm. I think that was done practically as well. I don't I don't know all the details on that one, but uh, I've, it, I've seen like behind the scenes stuff where they show like I, I think it's a I think it's a a full size train. Like it was a big train actually, and it just they just drove it off the edge. Or they were like, "Listen, we're either the, gonna we're yeah. either gonna crash this train ourselves, or you crash it for us." <laughs> um, I want to see Blue Beetle just to see what it's like. I haven't seen that one yet. HBO um, Max. Yeah. The latest Scream. I forgot that came out this year. I thought that was pretty Scream good. Six. Scream Six is pretty good. Uh, Scream Seven is gonna be strange to watch now. Oh yeah. yeah, John Wick Chapter Four. That was actually a really good movie. Oh, yeah, so that I, 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 I forgot that came. Yeah, I felt like that came out last year for some reason. Yeah. But yeah, that came out this year. Um, and I would say probably I really did like the um, the killer of, killers of the flower moon. Um, mm. That was Marty, a, that was a good one. But it's more of a yeah. I was gonna say it is more of a you know like watch it at home in the <laughs> in a recliner with some you know some warm cookies or something. I don't know. <laughs> no, no. As, as, as Marty School says, he told you. So you, you can go sit screen. in a movie for three hours if you need to, because you can go sit five hours watching some Netflix. Drink some scotch. <laughs> just, mm. just sit there. Put a, put a newspaper on your lap, but don't read it. Appreciate <laughs> my cinematic movie. art. A lot. Well, so how do we... <laughs> this big old eyebrows. <laughs> so so how, how, does, how does this get fixed in 2024? I think we just need more original movies. <clears throat> That yeah, I would say that because I think it's weird reliance on the IPs, yeah, and remakes. I would say this. This is one thing I remember a promise of, yeah. and this was this is going way back, and I was kind of disappointed because he didn't really fulfill that promise at all. That, so after the first Avengers movie came out, Joss Whedon, when people were asking him like, "How hey, you know what are you gonna do for Avengers 2? He said like, "You know, well, we went so big with the first one, we're gonna go." We're going to go more personal, darker, more personal. Yeah. So in my mind, that means, okay, so we're going to have, you know, the stakes are going to be big, but personal stakes. We don't need world ending stakes every time, you know, yeah. especially if you're gearing up for Thanos, that's going to be the big world ending stake, stakes. So just do something personal. Like, so sounds like it's geared up easily for some kind of Avengers inner conflict, you know, mm. instead that gets civil war or something like that. But Ultron happens instead, and that's what is it again? World ending stakes. I, I don't think you need world ending stakes for every single movie. They they keep doing these world threatening stakes all the time. I think Ant Man and the Wasp and Ant Man showed you you don't need world yeah. ending stakes every time. You, you can Ant make Man. that was good. Yeah, yeah, you can make great stakes. You know, great compelling you know arcs for characters where it doesn't feel like an entire city is going to get wiped out, or you know, and or the planet's going to get wiped out if the hero doesn't. You know, yeah. Get get to get to the sky beam in time. Yeah. So so I, I would mind I wouldn't mind just more personal stakes happening. You know, or just like or you know don't don't worry about being so big. You know, just just do good. Another flaw of the Marvels. They they went world ending world stakes. Ending. Yep. World ending. That's so, why if you look at Spider Man and Spider Man Two, for example, like the the Raimi ones. That's mm. why I loved those two movies. If you really watch them, they they don't. It's not like that. For I mean, there's I mean, all these movies you can say like Batman, Batman Returns, but it just feels like I like when they they don't have those big stakes all the time, where it's really personal, and then mm-hmm. you can have these big climactic sequences that don't have to be like, oh no, if I if if my thumb you know misses, <laughs> the whole world blows up or something. That like no, like it could be somebody's life is in danger that we we care about or yeah you know, kids on a train or so, whatever. It's just, I really like, and it's also, it's about that, you know, it's, it's usually about the good person versus the bad person. Mm-hmm. And we don't have to have all this other stuff in the, in the mix too. And I feel like that gets overlooked a lot too, because they want, they just keep trying to make stuff bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> and too, just the amount of content I think is a little overwhelming. Yeah. Oversaturation. 
Oversaturation is a thing. It but, does. It does exist. But I think Marvel is fixing to write the ship in 2024 with Deadpool three. I think, you know, that's going to be your introduction to mutants in the MCU, your big introduction. And there's lots of, of, uh, rumors going around about Deadpool three, lots of new people signing on to the movie. Which I want to say, did, on. is that, is the release date for that still on board uh, on schedule for next year? It, yeah, this is the only it's, Marvel movie in 2024. Oh, that is the only Marvel yeah. movie. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, if you don't count back. the Sony crap. Yeah. The Madam Web and the Craven and Venom 3 or whatever. That's fine. I, I find Craven the Hunter the strangest one of all. Like, I don't understand why that exists. No, no, no. No one who, like, if Spider. you don't know anything about Spider Man, you're not going to care. Like, yeah. so who is this man? Or what? Madam Web. It's like, kill it with fire right now. You know? Well, uh, it's weird that they're trying to build a Spider Man universe without a Spider Man. It's that's the I think that's the most bizarre point because they don't know what to do because they've got their they've got Tom Holland's Spider Man, yeah. but they don't have. I think they want to claim their own. I don't. I, I don't know what's going on with Sony. Sony's just yeah. in its weird uh, little, like echo chamber bubble where it's like fall. You know, I don't know yeah. what's going on in there. But I, I think it would be good for to not have the gluttony of comic films for a year. Because I mean, yeah. DC is not going to have anything at the box office. Yeah, I think yeah, it's going to be a it's going to be like a reset year. Unless you count the little rollover of Aquaman for a few weeks. Oh yeah, it rolls into January. Yeah, you know? but other than that, but I think DC writes the ship with some big wonder, stakes for Deadpool three and and what it means for you mean Marvel for Marvel, yeah, yeah. for what it means going forward uh, especially the, the way it's probably going to lead up to avengers yeah uh the two new avengers movies coming up that are being rewritten apparently yeah yeah My, well, who, who's the new writer uh michael waldron i believe yeah something like that which he he's a solid writer so i mean he's you know he's done some solid stuff for marvel so maybe he's a better well it, considering it was the guy who wrote quantum mania before it's probably better that they yeah. They got someone a little more reliable. So I wish we could come up with a consensus about why this is. I mean, why do you think? I think it's a mixture. It was. It was. It was a like. I think it was superhero and and just like franchise fatigue. And, and post COVID, I think, I think po post COVID, COVID has, and has, we had the strikes coming in at the end, so it started. I think stuff started to dry up too as well. Strikes, and, and I want to say that there is like I, I would say that there. It, Anytime that there is this feel of an agenda, and yeah. I and I don't have any problem. Like I'm not gonna have yeah. a problem with that. Like I was I was looking for. I'm looking forward to watching the Marvels eventually. Yeah, but it does seem like it. Anytime there's a hint of of an agenda, and, and when I say hint of agenda, it could even be simply just a, a a woman being the lead role of a movie or being a you know lead character in a movie. You you get a you know there's a there's a weird like pushback i've noticed especially recently since like in you know just look at like miss marvel and shield for some reason those those really got a lot of pushback and but you know it i mean it there must be something to it at least and and the reason i say that is because bob Iger came out today and and said you know the company is focused too much on movie messaging and not enough on quality storytelling. I mean, I don't think he cares about the quality. He cares about one thing. Yeah, bottom line. <laughs> money. Bottom He's like, line. we focus too much on, on trying to do anything. We just want money. But I but I think at some point, you know, Disney does lean left. And I think they oh, yeah. lean too far to the left. And you're cutting out some of your 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 money. So I think he's trying to bring it back into the middle, you know, to hopefully satisfy everybody involved, which is, you know, it's a dangerous thing to do yeah. in and of itself. So I, you know, I don't know what, what that means. Does, does, what does that mean for yeah. movies I, going forward at Disney? It's, well, at least at Disney. Yeah. I, I don't know, even with their Disney, cause they're, you know, they put out that new movie wish and it's flopped at the box office, basically. Yep. And what I understand is it was also supposed to be building a bigger, 
basically establishing a bigger Disney universe. Oh, well, really? now that that's flopped. Yeah. So now that that's flopped, it's like, well, because isn't that movie supposed to be like based around that? The concept around it is based around the castle. The Disney. I castle? really wish upon a star. I don't know about thing. that. I don't know about the I, castle I per se, but the okay. probably the wish upon a star. Oh, thing. okay. I thought it. I thought it was yeah. based around like the logo castle, like where you know, a story no, where no, that's like an icon huh. basis, and then we build a story around that idea. No, no, it okay. was like that build. It's like the wish, the wish upon, upon a star, a star. and okay. then it then it goes into apparently a it kind of branches into a bigger disney so basically i think like all it, it, it the movie makes it away so that all the disney movies were live in their own universes where so they all kind of multiverse. yeah pretty much everybody's in their multiverse crap it's like okay but <laughs> but yeah i think it just needs to drop that crap because that sounds like like you said that sounds like an agenda that sounds like oh man let's bank on this this multiverse yeah stuff and yeah, let's come up with quality stories, but we also need optimistic stories. That's the thing too, is I think a lot of Disney and, and Marvel and things like that, we've got to, especially they're under the Disney flagpole, Star Wars included in that. We got to start telling uplifting stories as well. And we got to start having more hope for stuff. I mean, that's something that George Lucas carried. You know, that's mm -hmm. what he, he thought about. That's what Walt Disney pushed for. And I, I think that's something that we're also starting to slip away from is that, that we, like you said, we start to become preachy, and then it, even though we're we're trying to be preachy in a way that we want, we're trying to say that we want a better tomorrow. Instead, we're being more doom and gloom instead of just sh providing what a better tomorrow looks like, yeah. and not even really preaching that. It's just let's let's just, and, and I also just feel like people just need to to try to be more creative and let's get off the the IPs as much and let's. Let's give a little more of the originality. Like let's 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 try some things that may fail. You know, I just get tired. That's, I think that's another reason why we're also tired of all these franchises. I, I think that's why I love Dungeons and Dragons so much. You know, Honor Among Thieves was it was <clears throat> you know it it is an established IP, but it's definitely not anything that's been big or you know used well, lately. It, it was, yeah, but it also felt like it tried to tell its own story within yeah, a larger too. universe, but yeah. it didn't have such a big story. You know what I'm saying? So you could you could relate to it and get mm. into it and have fun with it. You're relatable, yeah. And it's relatable. Maybe the next movie will deal with bigger consequences in the D&D &D world, but that movie just felt like a fun intro into yeah. that universe that yeah. you could easily jump in and out of at any yeah. time. And you know what? There was something else I was thinking about, not related to movies, but to toys. I was like, when is the last time you've been to a Walmart or Target or whatever and seen a new toy line, not based on any franchise, just a company saying, hey, we're going to put out this line of action figures based on this new thing that we're doing to make it sell like Transformers did when it came out, G.I. Joe did when it came out, Thundercats, E-Man, you name it. I don't know if those exist, <laughs> or at least in a supermarket sense. Those... <laughs> Yeah, I know. I mean, because when I think, because when I think of that, what you're saying is, you know, a non-IP toy. Yeah, you know, it comes to my mind. I think about the knockoffs in shop right pharmacies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the knockoff toy is the the, the the face the, man, the, the, the space laser. Oh, I thought you said face man. Could be face man. Face man. The, 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 the blinking like my powers of face. The, the blinking laser sword. That's definitely not a lightsaber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i think i think i i don't know i don't know i don't, I don't know a fix for that solution i don't know yeah. a fix for that problem like I, I would say one of the only friend uh, one of the only toy companies i know that have been doing an okay job of making their own little in you know their own house ips that are actually somewhat successful has been lego you know, they yeah. make like Ninjago, I believe, is pretty successful. I think they just started a new one. They're trying out this like dream base. So it's like these weird little bizarre mishmash. The, the, the designs look really cool, but yeah, they've done an OK job. But I I don't, I don't know, like as a whole, like it just I because I, I know I, I maybe it's because, I, you know, the adult stuff in me. I, I don't go just looking for toys. I, I look for toys that appeal to two IPs that I love, you know, I've, yep. I've loved since I was a kid. So I, I think I'm past my point of just seeing like, Oh, that's a, that's an interesting looking 
man ninja figure. I'm definitely going to get that because <laughs> yeah, it ninja. doesn't it doesn't speak to space me really. Man. Yeah, space man. <laughs> man I think ninja. the last time toys yeah. like that spoke to me at all, yeah, I, I, I'll be honest one. with you. The last time I think that it spoke to me was probably the Buzz Lightyear movie um, toys because oh. I thought those were an actual honest. Um, even Toga though this man. was established IP, I yeah. was like. I was like, hmm, I like the, you know, I like the assortment of figures, like the characters, but I also like the spaceships, but it was just that this came from some established IP where they didn't really try to push you to understand the world as much. I mean, they gave yeah. you the toys, but it's kind of up to you to really fill in the blanks. They didn't really care to, because at the end of the day, it really didn't matter. This is just a throwaway IP or this is a throwaway um, story because it's just a movie that exists in the world of Toy Story. You yeah. get what I'm saying? So I don't know. It, it's just, that's why I'm like, man, we, yeah, if they could, if, and I, I get what Ray's saying until you reset a certain age where you don't really just go looking for any kind of toy lines, but I do get interested if there was something that, that was, you know, number one, the toys look good and were functional, mm -hmm. yeah. seemed like something that kids were, were heading towards, you know, or something that kids would be interested in playing with, sort of like looking at Turbo the Man. Turtles yeah. line or, huh? Turbo Man, Turbo Man. Yeah, Turbo Man, yeah. Turbo Man. Every and, kid wants Turbo Man. And maybe this is a good conversation for next week. Yeah. Talking, you know, talking about this. Because I don't want to, I don't want to, I didn't mean uh, to like derail us or anything. Oh, no, but I, sure. I know we're not going to, we're not going to solve the, the movie problem of 2023. So, But we can solve the problem of getting Jamie his Turbo Man in time for Christmas, right? Yeah, we yes, can we do can. that. We can. Okay. So any, any hauls for the week? I don't have uh, any hauls myself. I, I have a couple of hauls because we've made a backlog. <laughs> Okay, well, go ahead. Um, let's see, I'm gonna start with uh, this right here. So, finally, just decided to start getting some of these figures, and I've got some uh, Dungeons Dragons Honor Among Thieves. I have Simon. Did you go to Ollie's? Sorcerer. Yes, I did. Uh huh. I saw. Uh, I, I had a wild hair in my head. I was like, you know what? I remember Ashley. You know, he saw some there, and I decided just to, just to take a chance and see if they had it. And hey, Ray, just curious, what happens if you switch your camera? Can you switch to to the other camera? Do you like? I don't have camera? it plugged in. Oh, oh okay. Say, you're really fuzzy, but that's fine. Sorry. Okay, can it's you probably can you just your him? internet or something? Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't, we, no. we we can't see him really well. <laughs> Here, well, get me off for a second. If you go go to Ashley's hall, and I'll pull my camera out. Okay. So but, the only thing that I have, because you know, I hadn't. And I, I really hadn't bought any toys in the last couple of weeks, which is crazy. But I did go on whatnot the other night, and uh, I, I always enter giveaways, and and, I, and I've won two or three. But this one was kind of cool. Um, this IDW comic here, num numbered thirteen sixty four out of fifteen hundred, <laughs> and signed. By Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles create co-creator Kevin Eastman, dude, that is so cool, and I love that art too. They got uh, Yusagi on the front with them. Yep, yep. The black and white art, so that's kind of classic. And I got this Ooh. cool certificate of authenticity from Kevin Eastman himself. Ooh, and it's a Donny. It's a Donny picture. Yep. So that was pretty cool. That's that's my really my lone get. I do, I, you know, I did lie. You know what? I think for for my birthday, I forgot. I did get this. I finally got the uh, oh yeah the I guess the raccoon suit Mario yeah. from the movie it's a Mario. And you get you get the leaf. Nom, 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 nom. Yeah. But yeah, I was like, because this is my favorite suit is when Mario uses this form. And so yeah, I, I love this. Other than Aww. the cape, if they had the Super Mario World Mario cape, that would be cool too. But it's yeah, that me, was kind of my Mario. That's kind of my only uh, only get. I don't think, well, I don't know. Maybe since last time we recorded, I did get oh, yeah, Robin. I don't that. think I showed him my nope. off. Well, that's so, cool. Yeah, so I got Robin. I've, I've got them all now, except because, see, I've got Robin. Got uh, Batman. Bats. Yeah, we got Batman and uh, Mr. Freeze. Mm. So Jeez. I'm missing Scarecrow, which I actually saw him at the store the other day. They had a bunch of them that came in, so I hopefully will be able to go and grab one. Oh, okay. So and then I'll then I'll be able to put together Condiment King and show him off to everybody. Sweet. That's what I'm excited for. Yeah. All right. Do I, do I look any better? Do I look yes, any you look ten times better. I I jumped out and back in. So okay. here, let me show you again, Simon, real quick, in case you didn't see him very clearly. But oh, oh way yeah, better. Cool. Yeah, nah, dude, he looks great. Yeah, he does. 
I, there is a slight flaw above his head. There's like a little scratch. You can probably see it a little yeah, bit. I can't see it. Okay. But anyways, yeah, it's great little. Looks like the dude from the movie. Yeah. Looks like J- uh, Justice Smith. Great yeah. actor. I, I loved him in it. Uh, got hold of not as bad as I thought she was going to be. I think I really looking at her up close. Hmm. I think the problem is, I think it's the head, like her hair. Yeah. I think if it like, I think if this top part, if it was flattened just a little bit, it would look more close to because the face sculpt itself, when you look at it close, it's pretty, it looks pretty close to Michelle Rodriguez. So yeah. I don't know. Uh, I actually did order Edgen finally. Hmm. So he's on the way. And I managed to get a deal on uh, the uh, owl bear that. Oh yeah, Jordan, fifteen bucks on Amazon. Wow! Oh wow! Yeah, but uh, okay. So I got three more. Uh, let me do the Star Wars ones. Uh, so I got Harrison Dua. Now this is live action uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead's version mm-hmm. from Ahsoka. Fantastic figure. Looks great. Uh, Feet, as we've talked about before a little bit with, you know, female characters, feet's a little weak, so she needed to be on a stand. But once I got her pose, she looks awesome. Hmm. Uh, Maroc. Oh, Ooh, that's looks so cool. Fantastic. So great great figure, great sculpt. If you take his head off, does he turn to dust? Smoke? <laughs> uh, if only. You like the uh, the Ninja Turtles toys that would have the green goo just have it coming out of him. And finally, this is this might be my favorite from this line now. Now that I have him, but I have Indiana Jones from uh, Last Crusade. Oh, oh, that looks sweet. so good. And I, I, I've talked about this with Austin. This might be my favorite of the Indiana Joneses now. Uh, and this is one cool new feature they've added with this mm-hmm. figure that they didn't with the others. Mm-hmm. The hat is not a static sculpt. You can actually move it around on his head. Oh, you can kind of lower. You can raise it. He turns a little bit. So it's a it's a now it doesn't come off. So it's I think it's like got, it's, it's probably pegged in somewhere. Yeah. Ahead. But but it's I got lo- its own articulation. I guess. Yeah, I love that. Wow. And, and so it, so this I think this makes it my favorite one. Like more so I think up until I got this one, the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark was my favorite one. But I think this might be my favorite one now. That might be the main one I go for. I don't have an indie figure yet, so that may be the one that I would definitely grab. Yeah. Because, yeah, I I need to get one. I've got a short round, but no indie. Short round, but no indie. Yeah, I'm just a, I'm a sidekick kind of guy. What can I say? Oh, and also I do have the uh, Batman and Robin figures pre-ordered, all four of them. So that I can't wait to show off when that comes in, which is supposed to be, what, I think the 14th. So pre-ordered all of those from Amazon. Put them all together. Going to have a big Arnold, Mr. Freeze. Hey, hey Austin, uh, what killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age. <laughs> 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 All right. And on that, we shall end this episode. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Hit that like and smash that subscribe button. Or smash the smash like. It. Smash it. Smash, smash it. Smash it. Subscribe. Whatever. You know what to do. Smash uh, it. It really helps. It really helps. Smash it. All right, guys. Smash it. Smash it. See you later. Later days, but also smash it.